uh, the good folks at, at, at Lucasfilm and George Lucas himself was pretty much developed over time playing with Pete King. And as you know, kids get older, they start to put stuff down. Uh, Pete kept playing beyond the age when the other kids, my friends from home, stopped playing Star Wars. I can continue, we got another two more years playing Star Wars up to the time I was about 13 on the crest of 14. Then we stopped playing, and not because like we'd both grown up, but because he moved on to G.I. Joe figures, you know, and I couldn't follow him there, because I'm like, what? That's fake, Star Wars is real. <laughs> So all that time, all that childhood development time spent with Pete King and whatnot, playing Star Wars, and no weird awkwardness. You know, sometimes like as kids, you wind up playing Doctor. We didn't have any of that. Star Wars was our sex, you know. It turned us on because like a brother could make out with a sister or make out with another guy. There was a weird three-way going on. That we didn't understand sexuality. We, didn't, we knew it was hot and wrong and stuff. And so we worked that into our games. It wasn't just war over and over. We stopped for the romance. We would structure them after the movies and stuff. Read Splinter of the Mind's Eye and then try to ape that with the figures and stuff. So that was the kind of stuff that we would do together. And then, you know, we stopped doing it. I'd see me periodically stop coming down so much over the summers. Uh, he'd spend more time up with the city, with the city friends. Eventually, he had interest even in G.I. Joe. He had great interest in like punk rock and stuff. And so I would barely see him. Maybe every few years, I'd see him come down with his parents to his bungalow across the street from ours. And you know, he had like a, a, a dead Kennedy shirt and pins and stuff like that. So we chit chat. I was not that cool. I didn't have any pins in my face. So um, you know, but we always had Star Wars, man. We talk about this, that, or the other thing, and blah, blah, blah. Every once in a while, there was like an update. At one point, there was a commercial, I think, uh, with a battery at Darth Vader and the Ever Ready Bunny and stuff. And I remember seeing Pete, like he was down for a rare occasion, and he's like 17, 18, maybe 20 at this point, I forget. And uh, talking about, like, interested to see the commercials, and weird. we never thought to uh, play that game when we were kids, stuff like that. The la and then, let me see, that was the last time I think I had a conversation with him was about that Ever Ready Bunny commercial from Pretty Damn Sure. Next, uh, maybe a year later, two years later, you don't think about people that you lose touch with them. My mother said, hey, uh, I heard from Mrs. King. I said, Mr. and Mrs. King, something horrible happened to Peter. I said, what? She said, he was in Brooklyn, stepped off a curb, and he just literally got hit by a cab. Like, I was like, was the cab driver drunk? I'm like, no, was Peter okay? Drunk? No, he was fine. Just a total fucking accident, he got hit, and fucking killed and died instantly. And that, you know, is weird because all my childhood was spent playing Star Wars with, with uh, Pete. So when I came to the celebration, it's weird, like I was looking at the big banners and shit. And uh, yeah, even if he had lived to be an adult of my age, he probably still wouldn't have been into it. But in some small way, I was just like, they made it, Pete. 